in the time soon. Great. Uh, welcome everyone to, to this webinar. I'm really happy to see uh, everyone joining. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, how to sell more online. Uh, so the webinar will cover uh, some solutions that you can use to increase um, purchases, especially for physical products. Uh, I would ask you again to mute yourself if, um, if you're just joining, as we'll have a lot of people on the call, and this will improve the quality for everybody. Um, today, uh, it's uh, me, Odolena, uh, from Google. Um, I'm an account manager working, uh, joining from London. I have also my colleague, uh, Ankit Jain, also from Google, a partner manager working with One.com. Uh, and we have uh, Simon Carlson, uh, who is actually the person behind uh, a lot of the useful tools that you have on One.com for uh, small businesses. So I would ask um, Simon uh, to kick it off with a little bit of uh, info about um, about uh, the, the solutions for small businesses on One.com's website. Yes. Thank you, Rolina. Um, Do you want to present? Yes. Okay, I'll start presenting. Um, there we go. So, hi everyone. Um, thank you for the introduction, Arlena. So, I am a product manager uh, in One.com for our website builder, um, and my main focus areas are on the build and launch aspect of the website builder. So, how can we help our users uh, build something in there and then publish it? But also the e-commerce aspect, and this is where the topic today is around a lot. Um, but I would like to bring it back a uh, little bit of time initially uh, talking about our website builder, um, which is a product that has been with One.com for the majority of the time um, that One.com has existed. It has been through a lot of revisions, but the main goal has always been how can we help our users and people who are not native to coding or designing have a presence online. Um, and this is still really important for us today as to how can we help our users, and especially those without a lot of professional experience. Um, but that also resulted in approximately five years ago, we initiated a small project on the side um, where we explored uh, not only uh, websites, but how can we help users move a business online? How can you? create kind of your own presence there with a business. Um, and that little project was what became to the online shop today, or I could say what it was earlier this year, because finally uh, in March of this year, it, it matured enough that we wanted to merge it with our website builder. And, and that created the business and e-commerce tier, um, as some of you may be on today. Uh, and this tier is focused on, of course, e-commerce, but also just how do you have a business online? So there's a lot of other tools that are not necessary for e-commerce, um, but definitely they will help. Um, so let's let's dive into this e-commerce bit. Of, um, and when we look at e-commerce, again, we want to help our users move online. So we define three objectives that were so important to us. And that is to help create beautiful products because the products is is what people are coming to look at. Um, we really wanted to assist in enabling a secure payment method and the checkout, such that there's never any doubt that, that your website is a secure one and that your online shop is a secure one. No one's spying on anything. And then we wanted to aid in setting up customized shipping options, which helps you ship your products pretty much anywhere in the world with the cost that you define. Um, and it's a very flexible tool at the moment. Um, and this is, of course, not an exhaustive list of everything we have both in our website builder or in our, in our online shop, but it is definitely what we're focusing on because we really want to be experts at this. We want to help people move online and that making sure that it's a safe and secure place to be. But we also recognize that we need to move on and we're ready to add a fourth point to this list. Um, so earlier this year, we introduced the shopping campaigns and, and Google Ads setup in our online shop. Um, and we did that with the phrase, how do we help our users reach new potential customers? So it's a focus point for, for One.com as a, as a company to see how can we then get to the point of helping you guys 
reach new customers? How do you show yourself online? Because it's it's really important to to show your presence presence and push yourself out there. Um, because it's only in very very rare instances people find themselves coming to your to your place by themselves. Um, and this is why we we're going in this webinar with the real experts at at creating kind of a pushing a presence online, and uh, and that's with Google. And I think I would like to push it over to to Ordolina and and Ankit from here because they will help you understand how you can use the tools that are then now at your exposure to push yourself online. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Simon. Okay, let's um, dig in again. I'll share the presentation. Great. So our agenda for today, uh, we will start first on talking on how to attract more customers then we'll talk about how to improve website experience, how to increase the chances of someone buying from this website. And finally, our final destination is to sell more online. Let's first start with the idea of attracting more customers. Thinking about, just think in your head, how many places does a customer check online before making a purchase? Uh, research is showing that this is it takes between uh, 6 to 12 in different interactions for someone from hearing for a first time for a brand until deciding to actually use the service or buy a product from them. Uh, these can be interactions like uh, seeing an online ad, but also seeing the store, coming in store, checking, uh, maybe asking for reviews, um, seeing a, a leaflet or a banner. And now with the use also of devices like tablets, desktops, and mobile devices, the shopper's path to purchase is grown even more complex. Um, we see that shoppers are kind of between online and offline, checking for reviews online, uh, comparing prices, uh, going in store, checking the, the products uh, there. Um, also a lot of uh, stores offer only online. So it is becoming more and more difficult um, to understand actually this whole journey. Uh, however, it is important to understand that it takes a lot of interactions. Uh, a customer would not make a decision straight away whether to buy or not, rarely, especially on, if they only see an online presence. Um, so that's why it's important to have different touch points uh, and to be present along this whole journey um, to, uh, to actually establish your brand with, uh, with prospective buyers. Let's imagine the journey of a small uh, business owner. Let's say this is Emma. She has a flower shop, wakes up early in the morning, uh, first thing, driving to a new supplier, um, she's checking her phone, she's using Google Maps or some other navigation tool. Then later on, she's in the shop, uh, she's using Gmail to check new emails. Lunchtime, uh, again, mobile device, using social media to get some ideas and inspiration. Uh, 2 p.m. working, maybe using a DI video on YouTube, again, on a mobile device. Later on, researching properties for a new store on Google search. And finally, the work never ends at 10 p.m. She's reading blog articles. And in some blog articles, there's also um, advertisements and different ideas um, for, uh, for making, uh, for, for online marketing for florists. So you can see the journey is complicated. There's a lot of online interactions, but they are across different devices and different platforms. When you have this journey in mind, I would like you to think on how you can be helpful to your customers along each of these uh, interactions across the journey. First think, where do they look for information? Where do they get ideas? It might be different for every business. Uh, there might be specific websites or specific uh, places where people really look for more information uh, on for this specific type of product. Um, also, think about how to tell their message in a simple way. I think 
all of us are expert in something. I also, uh, we at Google, we often do this mistake. We are so much into, um, into the online marketing world that uh, we forget that we sometimes use lingo or words that people don't really well understand. So make sure that you're giving the message in a simple way, thinking as, as the customer, uh, maybe they don't know uh, everything, uh, what other information they would need in order to make a decision. And finally, make it easy for them. And I think uh, Simon um, emphasized as well a lot on how easy and good um, and uh, like a simple the checkout process is on uh, on.com web shops. But also, yeah, make it easy when it comes to providing the necessary information and everything that a, a client needs to know before making a decision to purchase. I have a question for you. Just pop in the chat your, um, uh, what other, how many channels do you use to market your business online at the moment? Think about website, search engine optimization, social media, YouTube, video advertising, or, or in general, any type of advertising. Just roughly kind of on the top of your head, how many channels do you use at the moment? Just pop it in the chat. Four, three, two, five, six. Well, five, four. Okay, that's interesting. A lot of people. Oh, eight channels. Five, six. You. Yeah, it's usually it's more than one. I didn't see anyone mentioning only one channel, uh, which is good and because, as I mentioned, there are a lot of different interactions along the way, especially online. Um, what I wanted to uh, kind of think about here is the time that you invest, especially if you're um, putting information and uh, using more than two channels for online marketing. This is taking a lot of time, and as a business owner, you never uh, you never have enough time for everything. So imagine maintaining uh, eight different channels. Uh, it's a lot of work. Imagine if you could reach customers across several of the most popular online channels with one action. This is a product called Smart Shopping Campaigns, uh, and we partnered up with One.com, and now we provide Smart Shopping Campaigns uh, inside the website builder, uh, I'll show later in the slides exactly where to find it. But basically, it's a very simple solution, which uh, requires uh, the merchant only to uh, dedicate, decide what budget they want to invest in in marketing, and Google will actually show their products across um, Gmail, YouTube search and shopping, as well as the display network, which includes blogs, news websites, and apps. Uh, across all these different devices, so mobile, uh, tablet, and desktop. Uh, important to know in Europe, smart shopping campaigns and any shopping product uh, can be used with a comparison uh, shopping service, so any comparison shopping service, not only Google. Uh, and this can be um, uh, basically changed easily depending on what uh, the advertiser prefers. This is how smart shopping campaign ads look like. Maybe you have seen some of them before, uh, so they can appear in the search results as product images, as display ads, uh, maybe something that you were looking at previously. Uh, you can see this product again on a website or app that you are uh, checking. Uh, on YouTube, uh, under a relevant video, and also in your Gmail folder, uh, once you uh, expand a sponsored email, you can see some products. So these are all um, basically options for a product to show using smart shopping campaigns. You can create a smart shopping campaign directly from your one.com shop. Uh, so you don't need to actually go on Google and try to figure out how to create your campaign uh, and uh, pass all this information about your products to Google. Uh, we have built a very seamless integration with one.com where this is available directly in the marketing section of your online shop. Um, you can click there and uh, the sign the flow is, will take you maybe five steps to complete. Uh, basically, you just have to decide 
how much you want to spend, which country you want to target, uh, and the rest is completely automated. Google will decide uh, basically which, how much will be spent on uh, each channel, on Google, on uh, YouTube, on Gmail, or display. And I'll explain in detail how this works. It's a very simple setup. In five minutes, uh, we'll take you, and you can start with as low as five euro a day. Everything is completely automated, so you just have to set it up once and it will start automatically working for you. Another thing to explain is that not all of the search results in Google are ads. Uh, so you have seen probably on the search text results, you have some ads on top and below you have organic results. So these are websites which um, you basically have helpful content and rank high on Google. Now we have the same approach also for the shopping part of the search results. So on top you have some ads, which can be uh, ads from smart shopping campaigns. And below you have free listings or unpaid listings. So the great part of this integration is that you can actually uh, use both. You can have uh, advertisements, so smart shopping campaigns, and your products will also appear on the free results. So you will also get free uh, clicks and free impressions um, in, the, in the product section. What it takes is just to submit the product information that you have on your website, like titles, prices, um, and descriptions of the products, images, and uh, this information will be uh, exposed on Google, similar to the search results, the way you see some websites appearing in the search results, the similar way you will see some products appearing for free in the search results up next to the ads as well. However, um, there is an option only to use unpaid listings uh, at the moment, uh, but it is limited. Uh, you will get uh, free impressions and clicks, yes, uh, however, they will be only in the search and shopping uh, product information. Uh, you will not appear on Gmail, YouTube, or Display, which is only available with the smart shopping campaign, which starts with five dollars, uh, five euro a day. So here is how it works. Um, so one.com will submit your products via Google uh, through something called a product feed. A product feed is a nice name for uh, basically a data feed, uh, information about your product, including prices, descriptions, sizes, colors, etc. All this information has to be passed through Google. And this is a difficult part if you're doing it on your own. Uh, it has a lot of pitfalls, disapprovals. Uh, so we have a very good automation, which uh, basically the information is passed directly from your website to Google. And um, it, it, with all the changes and all the needs that all the things that you have might change in the products uh, to make um, them approved on Google will be tackled directly uh, by one.com. Once everything is approved and ready, it will show on Google. How it works is Google basically will scan this data and when there is a search query, uh, it will display the most relevant products on the top of the results either as ads or unpaid listings. Uh, and when it comes to uh, YouTube, Gmail, and the display network, we'll use previous purchase history, interest, what kind of videos users look in order to determine if they are interested in this product and selectively display the, the products once, um, once there is an opportunity. Um, we'll rank the products based on your bid. So the bid is determined by the budget. As I said, you can start with five euro per day, but you can decide to put more. The higher budget you put, the stronger your bid. And this also reflects into how often your ad will be shown. Uh, but also, of course, we take the relevance to the query. So even if you bid very high, the product has to still be relevant to what the user is looking for. Um, we'll automatically show the products to anyone who's interested in this type of uh, products on YouTube, Gmail, and Display. So this will all be decided fully automatically by the Smart Shopping campaign. One important thing to understand is that you'll only be charged with Google Ads once uh, a shopper clicks on your ad and goes to your website. 
we don't charge you for views or impressions or someone just scrolling past your ad only when someone actually expresses interest and clicks wants to check this product on your website. And also how uh, these campaigns autom are automated. They try to drive as much value as possible. Value means cost of sold goods. Um, so basically, if you are selling expensive products, uh, maybe the campaign will try to prioritize high value products, try to sell uh, more or try to sell more frequently of a cheaper product. But in any case, uh, it will try to give you more than you have invested. So if you've invested 120 euro, it will try to give you more of this into sale in, in sales revenue. Uh, so this is kind of, it's an automated uh, mechanism. And of course, um, you can start with a lower budget. If you have a higher budget, we'll try to give even higher value in return. Uh, so it works based on increasing your return on investment. We also have a special offer for one.com customers. Uh, I showed when you, where you can start in your uh, online shop in the marketing section. If you are first time uh, starting with, with Google Ads, this is your first campaign. Uh, when you sign up, you will get 120 uh, euros ad credit, which will be applied after the first 30 days since your ad has been running. So if you spend 120, you will get 120. If you spend um, 60, you'll get 60. If you spend uh, 240, we will still get 120. That's the maximum. But uh, this is basically a sufficient budget that we see results coming in even for the smallest businesses. And now I will ask my colleague Ankit to talk you uh, through a bit on how to improve your website experience. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Ankit and I lead the relationship with uh, one.com and uh, I'm passionate about helping small and medium businesses. Uh, so just before I talk about improving website experience, I just wanted to mention that uh, some of you had questions about uh, services on how you can promote more services. So in the previous section, we covered more from the products point of view so that let's say if you stock physical products like clothes shoes or artwork uh, but we will be uh, covering services in the next section on how we can help you to promote more services uh, online so Odulena will cover after me uh, but just just before that i wanted to touch base on a very important topic Let, let's say uh, you know you have done all the hard work and you have been able to get users attracted to your website, right? Uh, I think uh, some, somebody has a question. So, uh, Rosemary, uh, do you want to ask a question now? You can ask and then I can cover my section. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah, uh, I was wondering if you have a multilingual website, how that functions with this, uh, you know, campaign uh, shopping, smart shopping. Hmm? Could you yeah. uh, talk yeah. about that later? Yeah. Yes, we will. We will cover that. So yeah, our uh, our ads work on uh, all. All the languages, so, so we will we will cover that in question and answers in the in the end. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So so what is important is is not just to attract users to your website. Uh, that is a hard work that you have done. What is very important is how do we make sure that the people who are coming to your website actually uh, buy your products or buy your services. So creating a very good appealing website and uh, posting the message in the right way is very important. <clears throat> so here are some important uh, basic tips and tricks which we will we will cover. Uh, we can go be beyond those in the question and answer section, but uh, some of the key pointers which we have uh, observed within Google that uh, that help to to convert your users into customers is something which we'll be sharing here. So, Odulena, if you want to go to the next slide. Yeah. So, so what is important is, let's say if you are stocking products, or even if you have services, and if you are putting some images 
images are something which which can be very appealing or distracting to users and this is kind of a make or break decision from a user point of view so what we should uh, consider is whenever you are putting an image try to put a white background behind the image so that the image is very clear like the, your products are looking nice and shiny and uh, also make sure that there are no overlays or watermarks in the images because that just distracts users from clearly looking at the products so make sure it's a clear product image on a white white background if possible uh, a high resolution image so that your know, users can uh, look how good uh, the product is also from a services point of view a, a clear image just and shows that people think that your services are going to be more professional in nature. So having the right type of images is important. Moving on to the next one. What we have also noticed is uh, sometimes, especially when, when we are new uh, in terms of creating products, we just create headlines which are very short and they are not enough uh, descriptive in nature. So what is important is we try to think from a user's point of view okay when when i'm looking coming to your website for the first time what am i looking for i want to know as much as possible about your products in as short time as possible right so try to try to uh, include as much information as possible rather than just having a vague small two word title so you can you can include information like material size or colors to make it easier for users to decide, okay, whether they like this product or they find it appealing or not. So moving on to the next one. Yeah, one of the things which we have observed is uh, users typically get distracted when they have done the hard work of putting products in the basket and then later on they figure out that, oh, they don't accept the card which I have. So it's a, it's a good practice to, uh, to put all the uh, cards which you accept or the payments which you accept uh, initially. And also, if, if you are putting this information earlier on, then it also helps you, users to think, okay, they accept my, my payment provider, so I will just move on and just click the product and buy it. I don't need to think about it later. So it just helps from a user point of view from converting them into customers. Uh, next one. Yes, so typically, uh, before somebody is buying uh, your product for the first time, they have these questions in mind. What if I want to make a return? Is it even possible? And if so, how? And then who will pay for the shipping? Right. So it's, it's good to get these questions answered beforehand and make it very clear that uh, what are the shipping costs involved? Who's going to pay? And the return policy is something which should be available on each and every page of your website. Ideally, what you can do is just create a small link about the return policy which you have and put that link on every page of the website. That makes it very easier for use, very easy for users to understand how they can return a product if they want to. Okay, and uh, one more thing which is important is users want to understand how they can contact you. Let's say in case of uh, any questions with respect to products or services, or if they are not able to find enough information, how, how they can uh, get in touch with you. So please include one of the following options, at least one of the following options on your website, uh, either email, a phone number, or your physical address, or a contact form on the website, as simple as that. Or what is your social media, could be your Facebook profile or another profile. Uh, when when you are putting information for uh, Google pre-listings or ads purposes, you will have to provide your business address and phone number there as well. Uh, but uh, but more importantly, from users' point of view, having contact information on the website is very important. That also just uh, ensures that users think that you are a, a genuine seller and a genuine website. Okay, so I'll hand uh, it back to Otolina to cover uh, some of the services element on how we can help uh, to uh, small businesses to sell more services online. Thank you, Ankit. That was very useful uh, for someone uh, starting with their website. 
Um, so yeah, I will talk a little bit more on both how to increase your chances of buy, someone buying a service or a physical product or both, because yeah, some of you might be offering both of them. Um, we talked a lot about uh, what Google can do when it comes to buying a physical product from the website, but we understand that many of you are offering other um, uh, services uh, like education or healthcare or therapy. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can do with Google Ads in order to improve your presence and get more customers. Um, so some of the actions could be driving website visits, simply people clicking on your ads and actually uh, coming to your website, uh, finding you. Uh, then getting more phone calls if, uh, let's say, you operate by uh, receiving phone calls. Um, also increasing store visits if you operate from a physical location and store visits are important for you. Google can drive all these three actions. Regardless if you offer services or sell physical products, there is a solution uh, for you. Sometimes you will see text ads on Google when searching. Uh, so this is an example on mobile. You'll see quite a few ads with different uh, extensions. We call them extensions, but basically other bits of useful information uh, which are part of the ad. So these can be used both by e-commerce sellers and also service providers. Uh, to drive um, leads, maybe you're uh, collecting leads like uh, quotes or news, newsletter signups, uh, phone calls, uh, or uh, other actions on your website which are important. Or sometimes you can see both. You can see products and, uh, and also um, uh, search ads. So, uh, if you're an e-commerce seller, you can use both types of advertising, search ad and a product ad, in order to drive actions to your website, which can be from buying a product to uh, collecting leads, uh, getting phone calls or physical store visits. Uh, or if you are a service uh, provider, then the first option with the search ads will be the most suitable for you. You, the good news is that this is also available. So the search ads option is also available for one.com uh, users. Uh, and we have a seamless integration which allows you again in five minutes to set this up uh, in your, uh, from your control panel. Um, so uh, if you're providing service, you probably don't have uh, an online shop type of website. You probably have a, uh, like a normal uh, website uh, using the normal website builder in one.com. Uh, then you can go to the marketing section, uh, use Google Ads, uh, and, um, and start using the service. Or you might have just any website, you're just using one.com domain. This section will be available for you as well. Uh, and this is the section where you can start creating your search advertisement. Uh, once you sign up, and the same coupon uh, is available for you as well as a service provider. Uh, you can uh, get up to 120 euros in ad credit, which will be applied after the first 30 days uh, since your ad has been spending. And it will basically match the amount that you spend over these first 30 days up to 120 euro. And uh, this is all from us. We promised uh, 30 minutes. Uh, we are slightly bit over. Uh, but I'm hoping that you have been able to get some useful information and we'll be happy to uh, answer any questions. We also have Simon here with us uh, who can answer any questions related to one.com specifically. But if you have any questions about ads or the, anything that we shared in the presentation, please feel free to either pop it in the chat or um, yeah, uh, just unmute yourself and, uh, and speak up. Okay, um, we have several questions coming. I think uh, Janet was first uh, raising her hand. Janet. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to ask Simon, is it possible, does this ad works if you're, use, if you're doing your, building your own e-commerce website, like from using, um, Google, uh, what's that called now? <laughs> using plugins instead of using the 
e-commerce that um, Wondercom provide, or is it just tailored to that interface? Okay. It, yeah. Um, thank you for the question. It it should definitely be tailored if you choose to embed it into your own website, WordPress, or our website builder. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Great. I think we had another question uh, in the chat. Um, what are the costs, commissions for using uh, checkout? Uh, maybe this is a question for Simon again, or when you create, a, when you have online transactions on your website, what's the commission? Um, sure. So the we, at Wonder.com, we don't take any, any commission of any of the sales. The services that you sign up, so, so we work together with Stripe at the moment, they take a small commission, which they describe on their page, and, and is something that, that you can discuss with them uh, if you have uh, some value. Um, but at Wonder.com, we do not take any, any commission uh, from our checkout. Great. I think we had uh, Nagiova, Anita, um, raise the hand. Hi, yes. Um, I have a I have a very um, uncommon business. I am a children's entertainer and I have um, made a new um, service which is uh, providing balloon um, figures like um, uh, to send in a package which I can uh, which I can make. And um, yeah, I, that was a new thing for me because I was making all the pictures and I put a background, a darker background around it. It's like sort of into my um, design and my, yeah, but I got uh, this uh, idea from Ankit that maybe even in any uh, circumstances is best with a white background. Um, and yeah, so, I will, I will check it out. And uh, my question is, uh, do you have any tips for um, market which is uh, not really uh, popular yet, or nobody knows about it that it exists? Uh, I live in Norway, and uh, people has never met uh, the thing that I am making uh, at the moment. So I am doing a lot of birthday parties, but in the Corona times, I had some time, and I figured out this could be an new thing uh, but i didn't have any um uh, yeah so i haven't really put a lot of effort into advertisement but uh, i didn't have any um um order or any orders yet mm -hmm. for that for the online shop yeah. do you have any tips for that yes so uh, so is it more about the uh, party bags uh, which you which you are making, or you are selling both your services as entertainer uh, yeah, as well I am, as party. Yeah, we are making uh, balloon animals and balloon figures, like uh, special ones, which are taking more time than a balloon dog, right? So they are like really nice figures, um, and I am making like several figures, which can be like a toy for for the kids. Um, for a birthday party or for a special day or whatever, which which can be a, like a surprise, which they have never seen before that the, this kind of artistic uh, way of balloon yes. uh, modeling, balloon twisting, yeah. Yeah, so, so I think in that case, what is going to be very important is how do you describe the product, right? What do you call your product? So, uh, so I would suggest that look for some inspirations online, like, uh, you know, do are, are such products called as balloon toys or toys, or or just balloons? And uh, from a promotion point of view, I would recommend that uh, maybe uh, because it's it's a niche product, you start with search ads first, and use the keywords like toys or or for children, you know, toys for children or party toys, or balloons, party balloons, and that will that can give you uh, a good amount of traffic because there are a lot of people who are uh, searching stuff these days as, as the lockdown is opening up. So kids parties are happening. Uh, so I can mm -hmm. vouch for UK, a lot of kids parties are happening. And uh, you know that's where people are looking to buy stuff. So, so search ads might be beneficial in that regard. 
Yeah, I would also add that uh, you can use a free tool called Google Trends. I don't know if you've heard of it, mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it's basically trends.google.com. Uh, mm -hmm. And there you can select Norway and try to look for uh, searches that say balloon toys or different things and try to see like how many searches there are on what other things people are looking for uh, in Norway. They could be similar searches or topics related and you will see what's the seasonality when they there are spikes in the searches, what time of the year maybe there is some time when people are more organizing more parties than others and you can adjust also your campaign to to these timings. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much. Great. Um, I think we have another question from Malin. Um, how to best uh, formulate meta description in the web shelf? Uh, should one special, uh, use special characters between words? How important are these? So this is more of an SEO question, um, which I cannot really comment, but uh, I think it's important in general to have good information on your website and descriptions are part of it. So seeing descriptions is also part of the search results. Uh, so I want, from what my understanding is, it is important to, to keep them updated and try to imagine how this might look like in, in the descriptions uh, in, in the search results. So definitely, I think it's important to, to formulate uh, descriptions and to keep them updated. I don't know if um, Ankit or, Cal or um, Simon has any other uh, suggestions. Not necessarily, only that, of course, there's a field where you can add this meta description in our products and we still believe it's, it's very valuable to do so. Great. So we got a lot of useful feedback also in the chat, which is really useful for us and uh, for one.com. So keep this coming. I think it's really important to help us improve the product and make it more useful to your uh, to your needs. Yeah, I think we have uh, some more uh, questions. Uh, uh, Best Cloud has raised their hand. So, yeah. Yes, um, my problem has to do with uh, um, the Stripe payment. I'm all the way in Ghana, and um, it looks like our banking systems over here are not really into Stripe and other stuff. So I made a request some time ago that all I needed was that um, if there could be a chance that I could have the CD sign, that is our currency symbol, um, as part of the payment, currencies on the website that uh, will assist my customers to at least know the amount. But it looks like um, limited to the dollar sign or the euro and the other currencies. And um, it's quite challenging for me using the website to uh, market my products. So this is my problem. All I need is if I can just get a Ghana CD sign, that would be okay. I know with time, the banks around would also probably um, enroll onto the Stripe payment method. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for, for speaking up. I'm very sorry to hear about the situation with Stripe at the moment. Um, the way that we are doing it is that they are essentially in control of the currencies that are showed on the, on the page. So um, it's unfortunate to be here, but I would like to direct that to Stripe because they need to add it such that we then can pull that from their service. Um, so so I'm, I'm sorry, I can't help you more on that, but that's the approach that we would have to do. All right, thank you. Yeah. Odulin, I think there was one more question about multilingual capabilities. So if uh, somebody has got a website in multiple languages, how, how can we support that? So do you want to cover that? Yeah, sure. Um, this is a great question. And uh, basically, when you set up your uh, smart shopping campaign or uh, unpaid listings um, uh, request from one.com, you'll be asked in which countries you are selling. 
Um, so this determines basically the language of uh, these countries and also there are different requirements for the feed information in, in different countries. So we have made it extra easy for you. Basically, once you select which countries you want to sell in, um, the, the tool will automatically create um, two feeds, one, let's say, for Norway, one for Sweden, uh, depending on how many countries you are selling it. Uh, and will extract the information from your website in the right language and uh, currency. Um, it's very important in this case, on, again, you, to have the quality information on your website, to have everything in local language, in the local currency, uh, so that basically the information you provide is then uh, taken from the website and um, used on Google. So this information has to be very accurate. Uh, but we'll do automate, automatically, uh, once you uh, select which countries you are selling in, uh, these will be created automatically for you based on the data that you have provided on your website. Yeah. Uh, there are also two uh, frequently asked questions which I wanted to cover. Uh, one is about, uh, you know, let's say if, I, if I'm putting uh, five budgets, uh, five, five euros a day equivalent, let's say 150 euros uh, monthly spend, uh, then, then what is happening to it? What results do I get, right? Uh, so this is where uh, Google ads, both search ads and shopping ads are different uh, from uh, other ads. So as Google, we do not uh, charge any money till the time a user has not clicked on the ad and gone to your website, right? So if in the whole time, there might be a lot of users who might be seeing your ads, but all the, those views are free, right? Uh, for search and shopping ads. Only when the users are clicking on the ads and going to your website, that is the only time we, we charge uh, the, the payment. And uh, so let's say if you have invested 150 euros uh, in a particular month and uh, you have received ads only worth 50 euros, that means that 100 euros will still remain in your account to be used in the following month, right? So that that uh, whatever the amount is there, that will remain in your account and only for the ads uh, for, for which the users have interacted, uh, those will be the ads for which you will be charged for. The other question uh, which I have received a lot is, okay, after how many days do I start seeing results? Like I put the money on Friday, uh, do I do I see new customers, new clicks uh, on Saturday itself? Right? So it depends on what products you are selling and how popular they are in that country uh, as well. And uh, usually, our machines uh, take a lot of information into consideration that you know how your advertisements are performing, how your uh, products are selling, and there is some kind of a learning time, which is around four to six weeks. So. Initially, you might see that, okay, for, for a few days, three days, five days, there hasn't been a lot of clicks which you may not have received, but don't get disappointed that after a period of time when there is enough data which our systems have seen and they have seen that, okay, some people who are interested in the ads are clicking and then they are going to your website and, and some of them have actually bought the products, which we call as conversions, then slowly you will see that more and more uh, performance of the of your ads increases so so don't get, just get disappointed in in a few days time give it some time uh, give things some time to ramp up it is to both the search ads and shopping ads and then they start performing and that's one of the reasons why we provide also the coupon which allows you to kind of test the product a little bit longer once you have spent a little bit you get this matched for the next month uh, so that you can start seeing the results as it takes sometimes, especially if your website is very new and you don't have much history with Google. Uh, it might take a few weeks uh, until we kind of get enough information and the ads start automatically optimizing uh, to get you the best results. Uh, I think we have also a question from, um, from Anita again uh, about how much is a click. Uh, so this is automatically determined. There is not one cost per click. It really depends on how much budget you put in. So the lower the budget, the cheaper probably your click will be, uh, but your ad might not appear that often. 
Um, so uh, depending on basically the competition, how many other um, business owners are advertising for the same uh, category, the same type of product or service, uh, it might be more expensive. Also depends on the country, if it's a country where there's a lot of advertisers or country where there's not that many. Uh, so this can vary. Um, but it, um, with uh, smart shopping campaigns, uh, the great part is that everything is completely automated. So the bid will be based on what's the best return for you. So is it the possibility for you to make a high value sale from this click? Uh, then Google might bid higher and kind of give you a very high bid uh, because there is a high chance that someone is going to buy uh, based on a lot of signals that we have received from this user. Uh, I think we had also a question about um, creating uh, flyers and business cards, kind of like physical advertisement um, as a service from one.com. Uh, Simon, is this covered? Uh, I answered in, in the text, but ah, okay. we, we are focusing on the online presence at the moment, so, so we don't offer any physical services, um, but I'm, I'm sure many do in, in your countries. Um, I think yeah. I would also, while we're talking about these, Google, just shout out that that um, when you set up a, a a campaign, you always also get this analytics dashboard in our shop, where to Chantel's question, you are able to follow how it's going uh, and the progress of it, and also your some some stats on your shop. Um, I'm a little unsure if it comes with a weekly report, but definitely you can see it in your analytics dashboard. Yeah, and uh, you kindly shared also your email, which is uh, which is great. You can um, use and um, contact Simon if you have more questions specifically about the different services for small businesses on one.com. Yeah, I mean, by all means, please reach out. Uh, I'm not able to provide product-specific support. We have a great support staff, 24 hours for that. But if you have any questions, feature requests, I would definitely lo love to talk to some of you, just hear your stories and how you're using our products. Uh, that would give me a lot of insights on how we can improve it and help you guys. Great, we have more questions. Okay, I don't think we have more questions. Thank you so much uh, for everyone for joining and for staying with us until the end of the webinar. We'll share a recording shortly, uh, which you will be able to rewatch. And um, I strongly advise you to also explore your dashboard uh, and find these solutions, which we talked about, the search ads and the shopping ads as well, the unpaid listing option, uh, and yeah, start uh, getting some traction for your website. Wishing you all the best with your businesses, and yeah, hopefully we'll be uh, we'll be again on another webinar on uh, or another online event. Yeah, thank you very much. For your thank time. you guys. Bye.